on YouTube and Facebook. Book of Om Tuat, the Book of Gates, Chapter 5, the Gate of Chetbi, the fourth division of the Tuat. The boat of the sun has passed through the third division of the Tuat, arrives at the gate which leads to the fourth division. This gate is like that which admitted the god into the third division, and its outward is guarded by nine gods form of mummies, who are described as the third company of the gods of the great god who are within. At the entrance of the corridor which runs between the two walls is a god in a mummy form called Anurkata, and at the exit is a similar god called Setata. Each god has a Urias over his brow and each is said to extend his arms and hands to raw. The corridor is swept by flames of fire which proceed from the mouths of two serpents stationed each at an angle and their fire is for raw. The gateway of the fourth division is called Nepstephtafu and the texts say this great God cometh to this gateway, and entereth in through it, and the gods who therein acclaim him. The company of gods say to Ra, Open thou the earth, force thou a way through the Tuat, in the region which is above, and dispel our darkness. Hell Ra, come thou to us, the monster serpent which stands on his tail and guards the gateway is called the Chechbi. And the two lines of text which refer to his admission of Ra reads, He who is over this door open to Ra, saw, saith to Chechbi, Open thy gate to Ra, unfold thy door to Kuti that he may send light into the thick darkness and may make his radiance illumine and uh, illumine the hidden habitation. This door is shut after this great God hath this, passed through through it. And there is a lamentation to the to those who are in this gateway when they hear the door close upon them. In the middle of this division, we see the boat of Ra being towed on its way by four gods of the Tuat. The god is in the same form as before and stands in a shrine invoked by Mahin Sa. Now, Mahin Sa stands in the bow and Heka stand at the, sword, at the stern. The boat advances to a long old building with a heavy cornice which contains nine small shrines or chapels. In each of these is a god in mummy form lying on his back. The nine gods are described as the gods who follow Osiris, who are in their abodes, literally holes. Immediately in front of the nine shrines are two groups each containing six women who stand upon a slope, one half of which appears to be land and the other half water. These women are called the Hour Goddesses, which are in the Tuat. Each group is separated from the other by a monster serpent of many folds called Hararet, and of him it is said that he spawneth Twelve serpents to be devoured by the hours. The T 
text relating to the passage of the boat of the sun reads, The great God is drawn along by the gods of the Tuva, and he journeyeth in the hidden place, and worketh in respect to the things which are there. He saith, Draw ye me along, O ye blown beings of the Tuva. Look ye upon me, for I have created you. Pull ye with your arms, and draw ye me therewith, and turn ye aside to the eastern part of heaven, to the habitation which surrounds Eris, or Sar, and to that hidden mountain, the light or radiance of which goeth round about among the gods who receive me as I come forth among you into the hidden place. Draw ye me along, for I work on your behalf in the gateway which covereth over the gods of the Tuwa. And Ra saith unto them, Look ye upon me, O gods, for I strike those who are in their spect specters, saying, Arise, O ye gods, I have ordered for you the plan and manner of your existence. O ye who are in your sepulchers, sep sepulchers whose souls are broken, who live upon your filth and feed upon your offal. Rise before my disc and put ye yourselves in a right state through my beams. The duties which ye shall have in the Tuwa conform with the things which I have decreed for you. Their food consists of flesh, and their ale is made of red barley. Their li libations are of cool water. There is a lamentation to them after they have heard their doors close upon them. In respect of the twelve goddesses of the hour, it is said, These are they who stand upon their lake, and it is they who guide Ra in a straight line using their instruments. To them Ra saith, Hearken, O ye goddesses of the hour of the night sky, work ye and eat ye, and rest ye in your gateways, with your breasts towards the darkness, and your hind parts towards the light. Make to stand up in the serpent her wrath, and live ye upon that which cometh forth from it. It is your duty in the Tuwa to eat up the spawn of the Hararat, and ye shall destroy that which cometh from it. Draw ye me, for I have begotten you, so that ye may pay homage to me. Take ye your rest, or be at peace, or ye hours. Their food consists of cake. And their L is made of red barley, and their daughters are of cool water. And there is given unto them, or and their their droughts, and, and their draughts are of cool water. And there is given unto them as their food that which cometh forth with the ku, i.e., the beautified dead. right of the path of the boat of the sun, in the fourth dimension, division, we see twelve gods bearded and standing upright, who are called the gods who carry along with their doubles. Twelve jackal-headed gods who stand around the lake of life, who is called jackals in the lake of life. Ten Uriel, which stand around the lake of the Uriel, 
dinner called The Living Uriel. The paragraph which refers to the first twelve gods read, These are they who bear along with their devils, who immerse themselves in that which floweth in abundance from the slaughtered ones during the time of their existence, and who carry the offerings which are rightly due to the gods, to his abode. Unto them say Ra, that which belongeth to you to do, O ye gods, who are among your offerings, is to offer as an obligatory offering your doubles. Ye have your offerings, your enemy, enemies are destroyed, and they are not. Your spirits are on their thrones, and your souls are in their places. They say unto Ra, Adorations be unto thee, O Ra Kuti, hail to thee, O thou so whom art protected in the earth, hail to thee as being eternity, the Lord of the years and the everlastingness which hath no diminution. Their food consists of offering, offerings. Their drink is of cool water, and there is a lamentation to them when they hear their doors close upon them. Their food is given to them by the goddess Matsta, by Tesser Ba'u. The paragraph which refers to the jackal headed gods. These are they who come forth from this lake, whereunto the souls of the dead cannot approach, because of the sanctity which is therein. Unto them saith Ra, that which belong, belongeth to you to do, or ye gods who are in this lake, is to keep guard upon your lives in your lake. Your offerings are under the guard of the jackals which have set themselves on the edge of your lake. They say unto Ra, Immerse thyself, O Ra, in thy holy lake, wherein the Lord of the gods immersed himself, whereunto the souls of the dead approach not. This is what thou thyself hast commanded, O Kuti. Their food consists of bread, their drink is made of the red barley, and their vessels of drink are filled with wine. There is lamentation among them when they hear their doors close upon them. Their food is given unto them as lords of their scepters round about this lake. Paragraph which refers to the Uriel read These are they who have their speech after Ra cometh to them, and souls are turned backwards, and shadows are destroyed at the hearing of the words. Our voices of the Uriel unto them say Ra, that which belongeth to you to do, O ye Uriel. Ureo, who are in this lake, is to guard your flames and your fires, so that ye may hurl them against my, literally his, enemies, and your burning heat against those whose mouths are evil. Hell to you, O Ureo, that say unto Ra, Come thou to us, stride thou over Tanin. On the left of the path of the boat of the sun through the fourth division we see the god Osiris in mummied form and wearing on his head the crown of the south. 
standing on a serpent and partially covered by the earth of a mountain. His head only is above the ground and he stands in a naos with a vaulted dome. His name or title, Kent Amenti, is written by his side. Before the shrine is a flame goddess in the form of a Uraeus, and behind her are twelve gods who stand in front of Haru Ur, or Horus the Aged. The heroes of the Greek or later Greek writers, Haru Ur is in the form of a hawk headed man who leans on a staff. Behind the shrine which contains Osiris stands twelve gods, who are described as the gods who are behind the shrine. Behind or by the side of these are four pits or hollows in the ground, by the side of each of which stands a god with his body bent forward in adoration before the bearded god, before a beard, bearded god, who holds the symbol of life in the right hand and a, a scepter in the left. The four gods are called masters of the pit, and their lord is called the master of earths. The text referring to Horus reads, Horus worketh on behalf of his father Osiris. He performeth magical ceremonies for him and restoreth to him the crown, saying, My heart goeth out to thee, O my father, thou who art, art avenged on those who would work against thee, and in all the matters which concern that thee, thou art guided by magical ceremonies. Thou hast the mastery, O Osiris. Thou hast the sovereignty, O Kenti Amenti. Thou hast whatsoever is thine as governor of the Tuwa. O thou whose forms or attributes are exalted in the hidden place, the beautified spirits hold thee in fear, and the dead are terrified of thee. Thy crown hath been restored unto thee, and I, Thy son, Horus, hath reckoned thy weaknesses there. The twelve gods who are in front of the shrine of Kenti Amenti say, Let him of the Tuwa be exalted. Let Kenti Amenti be adored. Thy son, Horus, hath restored to thee thy crown. He hath protected thee, employing magical ceremonies. He hath crushed for thee thine enemies. He hath brought to thee vigor for thy arms, Osiris, Kenti Amenti. In reply to this address of the twelve gods, Kenti Amenti saith unto his son Horus, Come to me, O my son Horus, and avenge me on those who work against me, and cast them to him that is over the things which destroy, for it is he who guardeth the pit of destruction. Then saith Horus unto those gods who are behind the shrine, Make acquisition for me, O gods, who are in the following of Kenti Amenti. Stand ye up, and withdraw ye not yourselves, and be ye masters over yourselves, and come and live delicately of the bread of Hugh, and drink ye of the ale of Ma'at, and live ye upon that wherein my father liveth there, that which belongeth to you in the hidden place is to be behind the shrine according to the commandment of Ra. I call unto you, and behold, it is for you to do what it is what it is your duty to do. Their meat consists of 
cakes of bread, and their ale is of the tessert drink, and their libations are made with cool water. Their food is given unto them by the guardian of the things which are in the shrine. And Horus says, saith unto these gods, Smite ye the enemies of my father, and hurl ye them down into your pits, because of that deadly evil which thy have done against the great one, which found him that begot me. That which belongeth to you to do in the Tuwa is to guard the pits of fire according to Ra hath commanded, and I set this before you, so that, behold, ye may do according to what belongeth to you to, to do. This God standeth over by the pits.